If you'd like to use your drone for more than just pretty pictures, why not consider drone mapping? Let's have a look at how you can do that with Pix 4D Capture. Now I like this app because I can access it on both iOS and Android and also it's not exclusive to just DJI drones. So you can also access Parrot and Unique drones as well. So once you create yourself a free account, you can pop in and we're going to go into this upper left hand side into settings to start with. So you see on that right hand side, all the different drones that you are able to connect with for this app. Now, one thing I like to do is to turn this button off here. So it's automatically turned on when you first start, but this button for auto downloading images will basically mean that as soon as you land, those images will be sent to your device. And I don't generally like that. I rather pull out my SD card. So that's just a personal choice that I turn off there for that. All right, so let's pop out of the settings now. So once we've selected the drone that we are going to fly, we've got an option of the type of flight we're going to do. Now we're going to work with this polygon here. So I'm going to tap on that and it's automatically going to drop a polygon in the location where our drone is or where the tablet is at that particular time. But I'm moving that over all the way over here to this location where I'm going to plan my flight for today. So once I tap in the middle of my screen where the little icon is suggesting that I do that, it automatically drops this little flight plan. So you can see the up and back lawnmower type pattern where it's going to capture this data, which is great. But it's not exactly perfect just yet, so there are some bits and pieces that I want to change. And the first thing that I'm going to do is to change the altitude that I fly at. So over here on the left hand side, we've got a little scrolly bar and I'm going to increase that to 80 meters altitude. And as I do that, you'll actually see that my flight plan changes in terms of those white lines. So you can see that now I don't have so many flight lines. The next thing that I'm going to do is to change some of the overlap and side lap. So I'm going to go into the settings up here and you'll see that I can keep the, cam the camera angle here at 90 degrees, which is nadir, which is exactly what we want to do for mapping. But we can change this front overlap and the side lap here as well. So I want both of these to be set at 80%. The front lap is, so I want to now increase the side lap to 80% as well. So I'm just going to slide that along. And that way it's just, it's sort of an easy number to remember. So if we say 80 altitude, 80 side lap, 80 front lap, it's something really easy. Now I can also tap on over into the advanced settings here and let's have a look at what that does. So I guess one of the one of the biggest options that we want to do here is we've got this safe mode or the fast mode for our picture trigger mode. And that just means that, is it going to stop and take the photo at, at each location as it moves along? I generally keep that in the fast mode. If I'm at a high enough altitude and the drone is going slow enough, the photos will still be in focus. If you do ever come back with out of focus photos though, one thing that you can do is to decrease this drone speed. So you can always pop that down. So a couple of other options of things to play with if you like. All right, let's tap on out of those settings though and come back to our map. Now, if we have a look down in the bottom here, it tells us how long this drone is gonna fly for, which is about three minutes. Now, for me, I know that I can fly for about 15 minutes and that gives me enough time to get back to my takeoff and landing points. So what I'm going to do now is increase the size of the area that I'm going to fly. So I'm going to move these green dots around and as I do that, you'll see that it automatically changes the amount of time that I have available to fly. So I'm just going to continue to do that and I can play around a little bit. What we want to achieve though is a rectangular flight plan where possible. It's not always possible, but as much as possible, we wanna keep that rectangular. And we do wanna keep a north-south flight orientation as well, particularly over water. And that's, that's the best for avoiding glint. So when we have done that and we're, we're ready, we've checked our flight, checked our safety, all that sort of thing, then when we are in the, in the field, all we need to do is hit start. And that's actually going to then connect to the drone 
and send the drone off on its mission. I generally like to fly manually on my takeoff and landing, and then once, once the drone's up in the air, then I'll send it off on its way. I recommend just keeping a small flight plan the first time you fly, as you get used to what it's doing in automated flight. So good luck flying, and remember to down, upload your data to Geonadia when you're done.